Ever wanted to test max level 100 pets? Or OP swords and armor with extremely high enchantment levels, hot potato books, reforges and more? How about customizing slayers to create impossibly difficult boss fights? Or maybe you just want to mess around with gear you don't usually have access to, including admin exclusive equipment. Well, in the Hypixel Skyblock single player remake sandbox, you can do all of that and much more. All you need is the Minecraft world download. Hey guys, Blue Command here, and after pulling a time Dio, I'm finally back after more than six months with a huge version 2 of the remake sandbox I released back in December. For those of you who missed the first release video, this is the project where I've attempted to recreate the entire Hypixel Skyblock using nothing but command blocks, or a data pack, and a resource pack. It doesn't have all of the features of the real game, but I still think there's an impressive amount considering no mods or plugins are required to play this. I'll go into more details about where I've been all this time and important updates of what I plan to do in the future at the end of this video, so I highly recommend watching until the end. But to briefly summarise, I lost motivation for this project, so this release will unfortunately be the last big content release that I'm a part of. However, some of the Skyblock developer team do currently plan to continue to a version 3 on their own. They'll have their own group channel, but more of that at the end of the video. However, I'm still super motivated and excited to start posting YouTube videos again, so I'm going to start making my own ideas and own projects, which I think will be super fun and exciting to do again, such as, I don't know, travelling to space in Minecraft for example. So I really hope you guys will stick with me and give my other videos a chance, especially those who found me through the remake, as I start this exciting milestone in my YouTube life. And despite the sad news, on a more happy side of things, the Skyblock developer team have more than made up for it I think by producing a huge update for you all, and we tried to fit in as many features as we could into this release, hence the long time delay from version 1. I'll go through the installation process at the end, so without further ado, let's briefly recap version 1 features, as even those who did see that video may have forgotten some since then, and then I'll jump into the massive v2 changelog. So let's go. In the original release we had all public islands and NPCs with working dialogue but not shops, 16 joinable private islands, mobs including natural mob spawning in certain places such as the main island, howling caves, deep caverns in the end, working sidebar which keeps track of your money, location and the time slash season you're in, the stat system including health, defense, strength, crits etc. Almost all of the swords, bows, armor sets, tools, etc, although only a select few had functioning abilities in version 1. Some other miscellaneous items like the grappling hook, magical soup and remnants of the eye, as well as real skyblock admin gear and mob spawn eggs. All of the custom enchantments at the time of the release, which can be added to items using the custom enchanting table and custom anvil. The custom skyblock crafting table, although it only included the crystal and dragon armor crafts at that point. Complete dragon fights. A start of the fishing system, such as sometimes being able to fish up squid. Collections. The main skyblock menu GY. All of the accessories, as well as the accessory bag in the GY. A cheats GY, which is a separate GY which isn't in the real Hypixel skyblock game, but we made it to allow for really fun sandbox related options. In a later section of this video, what to do in the remake, I'll go into some more details about how powerful this GY really is, and the fun you can have from it. It's truly a highlight of the remake for me. And then the final feature is a website generator to make custom items. So as you can tell, we already had quite a lot of features, but we've just gone and basically doubled that in version 2. So now the most exciting part of this video, let's see all of the new stuff we've made. This version has been much more collaborative with lots of Skyblock developers taking part. I'll talk more about them later, but for now, keep an eye on the developer in the top right hand corner as they're the person who made the feature we're showing. Firstly, reforges. You can talk to the blacksmith to reforge your items, and you can get any of the reforges in the game other than the reforged stones. Secondly, public island tree regeneration has been implemented, as well as the park launch pads, and also the mining block regeneration system has been added. Whereas in version 1 it wouldn't even let you mine the trees and blocks. <laughs> as you can see there, the skills leveling system is also in the game. Currently you can collect XP and level up your farming skill, mining skill, combat skill, foraging skill, and fishing skill. The others are only partially implemented, so the only way to level them up is using the new Cheats GY page to level them up. Almost all of the skill rewards still need to be added, the only one currently in the game is the combat skills damage boost reward, which you can check your level of by clicking the skill in the skills menu. Next, the complete Slayer update is in the game. The entire Maddox menu works, you can start Slayer quests, 
work towards them and check your kills on the sidebar. All the starting animations work. The bosses all have their mini bosses and abilities. When you kill a slayer, you get slayer XP and slayer drops. It's truly incredible what our developer, the Carrot, has done. The Ender Slayer isn't in, as this was coded before that version was added to Skyblock, but otherwise it's a perfect replica. You can even get a Maddox Bat Phone to access the GY remotely. There's also another new Cheats GY menu for Slayers called Change Slayer Stats, where you can fully customise the boss's health, damage and much more. There's also a couple new Slayer settings featured in the Classic Settings page. And to help with Spider Slayers, the Spider's Den mob spawning has also been added, which is one of the missing mob spawning locations from version 1. Next, the Ferocity stat has been added, meaning you could do double hits or even more. Now, I think it's time for some item abilities. For Axes, the Jungle Axe and Tree Capitator now have working abilities. Seven more sword abilities are also now added, the Giant Sword's Giant Slam, the Flower of Truth's Heat Seeking Rose, Livid Dagger's Throw, Shadow Fury's Ability, Soul Whip's Flay, Yeti Sword's Terrain Toss, and the Golem Sword's Iron Punch. Appropriately, the Ability Damage stat has also been added, meaning any sword with an implemented ability has damage scaling. Ability cooldowns have also been added, which weren't in version 1, although there is a certain to turn them back off again, as I know I'm sure a lot of people had fun spamming abilities. The Warden Helmet ability also now works, as well as 17 more armor full set bonuses. And those are Master of Armor's Absolute Unit, Speeds of Armor's Bonus Speed, all three of the Tuxedo's Dashing Bonus, Frozen Blaze's Aura, Miner's Outfit's Haste, Lapis Armor's Health, the Monster Hunter bonus, the Monster Raider bonus, Tarantula Armor's Octo Dexterity, Strong Dragon Armor's Strong Blood, Superior Dragon Armor's Superior Blood, Unstable Dragon Armor's Unstable Blood, Wise Dragon Armor's Wise Blood, Young Dragon Armor's Young Blood, Wither Armor and all its variants like Necron now have their Witherborn ability. It currently says Dillabone on the top boss bar, but otherwise it's a replica. And Emerald Armor's Tank. Next up, Pets. You can choose from any of the pets. And other than pet items and pet abilities, which still need to be added, the whole pet system has been done, including leveling, spawning them to follow you, putting them into and out of your menu, and different pet rarities. We haven't added this to the cheats GUI, but top tip, you can instantly max out a pet by typing slash trigger max pet. There's quite a few of these commands, although almost all of these do the exact same thing as a Cheats GUI page, so other than this one, I wouldn't really worry about them. Hypixel Skyblock's take on Absorption has also been added, whereas before Absorption was completely broken and acted like it did in vanilla. The Builder's Wand has also been added, with a fun infinite resources setting as well, which means you don't have to restock it. Speaking of items, you've already had a glimpse of some of them, but at the time of release, there's currently all of the armors up to date. And since version 1, we've also added lots of accessories and materials too. Backpacks of all sizes and colours are now added. As well as the four different sized personal compactors. Collection rewards have been expanded on greatly. Now most of the collection recipe rewards are now available and you can be crafted once you've unlocked them. You can easily tell which recipes are added based on whether it says coming soon in the GY or not. And also all of the trades now work, and similarly can be unlocked from collection rewards. The Mine Merchant's NPC shop has been added, where you can buy all of its items for coins like usual. There's also been a couple of updates such as the new Hypixel Skybox Strength nerf which has been implemented, although this can be toggled on and off using the settings as well. And also the new Fairy Souls setting, which means rather than having all of the Fairy Souls or none of the Fairy Souls, you can now click to increase how many you have. The Dwarven Mine Islands have also been added to the world, although can only currently be accessed through the Teleport Cheat GUI. Good and great fishing drops have also been added, including the sounds and chat messages associated with them. Next, hop and fuming potato books are also in the game, and can be added to weapons and armour using the anvil. 
and you can also use another setting which will allow you to enable or disable whether you can use unlimited books to add to gear. Where the scrolls have been partially added, you can combine them to an unrefined blade and the abilities will show, including the special ability when you have all three scrolls on a blade. However, the ability's functionality haven't actually been completed yet. The Skybot custom music for the wilderness and deep caverns now plays when you enter them. And finally, the word was updated from Java edition 1.16 to 1.17. And that's all the features. Unfortunately, if I didn't mention a feature, it hasn't been added. So the final release, although much more survival friendly than the first, is still much better suited in my opinion to be played as a sandbox in creative mode. In the previous video, I did a segment on my suggestions of what you can mess around with in the sandbox, as obviously not all features are fun to play with, and some are just must-haves, like my personal favourite, crafting sticks. So, now there's even more fun possibilities, I thought I'd do this again. Specifically, I'll go into some more detail about the online item generator on my website, and the in-game cheats GUI. But just before those, some of my quick suggestions include Join an island, or potentially multiple Make OP items with whatever enchants, reforges and hot potato books you want Fight dragons Simply flying around in creative and messing with the map can be really satisfying Fighting slayers with strong gear or making your own Slayer bosses by customising their stats in the GY. Giving yourself all level 50 skills. Messing around with level 100 pets. Playtesting sword and armour abilities to see which ones you may want to purchase in real Skyblock. And probably much more which I can't currently think of in my head, such as going to my website in the description and using the generator, which I'm not going to do a full tutorial here because it's really simple to use, but yeah, I recommend you give that a try as well, that's one of my favourite things to do. Finally, let's go through the Cheats GUI, including all of its updates. By default, any player can access it by clicking the item in the top left of their normal GUI and it'll toggle it. Although, if you don't want your friends to have access to it, you can just run the command slash tag, their name, remove, cheats enabled, one word, and it'll no longer show for them. The first page in the GUI is Get Items, where you can, you guessed it, get any of the items in the game. And these are all sorted by categories. It's also very easy to tell if an item ability has been implemented, based on whether it has the message below or not. Next is the Teleports GUI, which is fairly boring, it's just convenient I guess. Its only redeemable quality is the fact that you can explore the Dwarven Mines in Creative I suppose. Thirdly, we have Change Base Stats, where you can choose any stat, including the new for version 2 stats, ferocity and attack damage, and increase or decrease them by a few different increments. Then we've got Set Coins, which does exactly what you'd expect. <laughs> Then in version 1, there was an upgrade collections button here which said coming soon, but instead now it says upgrade skills. And as earlier said, this is the only place where you can upgrade skills from the bottom row. Custom enchanting is a really cool system where you can choose the item type you want to enchant for, then the specific enchantment, and finally you can choose the level. And this level can go way beyond the normal enchantment levels, like into the thousands for example. You can also just grab a max book here if you want to quickly enchant a new item and get it up to speed. Then the next menu is settings, which is also super interesting. I'll leave you guys to explore all the settings for yourself, but just so you know, there's six new ones from version 2. And finally in this version, we've also started a second page, where you can see one more menu called Change Slayer Stats. In here you can change their health, damage per second, XP reward and coin cost of every single Slayer type and level individually. Or you can change the XP and cost of the random tier 3 and tier 4 options in Maddox. So, you know the features, you have your checklist of things you want to play around with, now you just need to know how to play. Well, the installation process is a couple more steps than usual world downloads, so listen closely. Firstly, this world download is for Minecraft Java Edition version 1.17. Unfortunately, I can't make it for version 1.8, which lots of you asked last video, or Bedrock Edition, as the command blocks simply aren't complex enough to do this. If you followed the installation of version 1, it's pretty identical. I originally planned for you to be able to convert your version 1 world to version 2 without losing your custom items and progress, but unfortunately this hasn't been possible. The developers continuing to a version 3 may decide to do this in a later release though. To get the world, you'll want to go into the description of this video and click on the link to the download. That'll take you to my website. Once here, you're going to want to click on this world download button, but heads up, it's a very big file. Once downloaded, you need to unzip it, 
and inside you should find a map folder and a resource pack folder. I haven't personally had any issues when unzipping this, but a few of my beta testers did, so if you're using some software which are giving you issues, I recommend just trying an alternative software such as 7-Zip, WinRAR, etc. If you want to play it in single player, you must first apply the resource pack by coming in here and clicking Open Resource Pack Folder. Drag and drop the pack named Skyblock Remake Resources into this folder, and then close and reopen the menu and you should find it in the list, and you can just apply it. You need to make sure this is at the top of your enabled list, so if you have any other resource packs installed, this should take priority over those. That's step one done. Now, you need to also add the map. To do this we need to open our saves folder. This can be easily accessed by clicking edit on any of your worlds and then clicking open worlds folder. We can then go back one folder and all of your existing worlds should show up in this folder here. Just drag and drop your download named Skyblock Remake Map into here. Before loading up the world, there's also a couple things to decide. As I said, this is a very big file, so your PC will need all the help it can get. Firstly, you might want to decide whether you want to use Optifine or Fabric for FPS boosts. As I said, this works 100% vanilla, so you don't have to follow this step if you don't want to. But, if you are interested in having an FPS boosting mod, I'll put a link in the video description of how to install Fabric Sodium and Optifine. But I won't go into it too much here, as pretty much everyone knows about FPS boosting mods by now. Secondly, you want to check how much RAM you've got dedicated to Minecraft. For this map, you pretty much have to have dedicated a minimum of 3GB. To check and change how much RAM you've dedicated to Minecraft, firstly, you're going to have to see how much RAM your PC has. If you don't know how to do this, on Windows you can easily do this by opening the Task Manager, but on Mac or Linux, you may need to search a tutorial as I'm not personally sure. RAM usually goes up in twos, so 2, 4, 8, 16. So to be able to dedicate 3GB to your RAM, you need at least 8GB on your PC I suggest. Anyways, now that you've done that, you need to go into your launcher, click Installations, and open the version you want to play in. So for me, that's my Minecraft 1.17.1 vanilla. You can then click on More Options, and scroll down to JVM Arguments section. You can paste in the following, which is in the description of this video. And if you only want 3GB, you don't have to change anything here, you can just click save and open up your world. But if you want to increase it from 3 to a different number, you can change the where it says 3 to whatever you like. I personally wouldn't recommend going over half the RAM of your PC, so as my PC has 32GB of RAM, I'm going to dedicate 16GB. But clearly I'm being extremely overkill. Once you've done that, you can load up the world and get started. The vast majority of our bug testing was done in single player, and for that reason, at the moment playing this map in multiplayer could be unstable, so it isn't recommended unless you're okay experiencing a bunch of bugs. But again, that is just temporary. In the future, all of these bugs will be flattened out, and it'll be a good experience for everybody. If you're willing to take the chances, how to upload a map onto your server will vary depending on your hosting service, so I recommend looking up one of their tutorials. For example, my channel affiliate, Apex Minecraft Hosting, link in the description by the way, has an in-depth video just on this topic. When adding the map to multiplayer, you'll also need to make sure the resource pack automatically enables when the player joins, which I'm sure there's also a bunch of tutorials on YouTube on how to do. And that's both the installations done. I need to give a huge thank you to the entire developer team. As you can tell, their contributions are huge, and in this version I honestly couldn't have done it without them. Especially, I wanted to give a shout out to the five head developers who went above and beyond to dedicate themselves to this project. The Carrot, Pix1 Pro, Banana Red Panda, Silicat, and Welcome Over. A couple of the devs wanted to have a quick few words of their own to say what they've worked on and talk about their own channels, so here they are. Hi everyone, I'm Carrot and I want to thank everyone who's been supporting us during this entire project. I also want to thank Blue a lot for having me into the team. I am Banana Red Panda, and for this version of the remake, I made mining and the pet generator. I'm Silicon YT, and I implemented the improved player NPCs and dialogue, the time and date system, and the foraging system into the remake. On my YouTube channel, I cover video game glitches. Also, we'd like to announce that the Skyblock remake developers now have a shared YouTube channel called Blue's Production Team, where we post our own data packs and group projects. They are insanely talented developers, and they've got extremely bright futures ahead of them. 
It feels really good to have made so many friends from this project, and hopefully this can lead to the start of their own YouTube creation successes, such as the group channel they just mentioned, which I believe these five are taking a lead on too. Inside the world there's a long list of everybody's contributions, so I do recommend you check those out in detail before you play, as well as check out those who have their own YouTube channels. Okay, time for some more information on that important news I shared at the beginning of the video. As I said, I still plan on posting my other Minecraft creations, but unfortunately for me, personally Hypixel Skyblock just isn't what it was for me, and I stopped playing it a while ago, so continuing this project just doesn't really make sense for me. You've got to remember, this project has been 18 months in the making, and I've dedicated myself to this project for so long. So, if at all you've appreciated the hard work I've put in, it would mean a lot to me if you could subscribe. I don't post very often, as you know, as I prioritise quality over quantity. So more than most of the YouTubers, I really can't rely on the YouTube algorithm to recommend my videos, as it just won't know if you're interested unless you tell it so. I know it's risky to end the series that got me all the way from 6,000 subscribers to almost 40,000 subscribers, but if you're currently subscribed for Skyblock, I think it'd be really cool if you stayed subscribed for a little bit, at least to give a couple of my new videos a try. I'm planning on keeping the same devlog style as I've been told lots of you found me from Skyblock, but actually stayed because you enjoyed seeing the creation process. As for the Skyblock remake, the Blues production team, as they've currently nicknamed themselves, have kindly offered to continue without me, so if you want to see where this project continues to go, I recommend checking out their group channel. As you can see on screen, they post lots of their own creations and shared projects, and this is where they'll continue to do the releases, probably smaller in size but still, more updates for the Hypixel Skyblock sandbox, which is always good news. So please check them out, their link is in the info card in the top right of your screen right now, as well as in the description. I think we should aim to get them at least 1000 subscribers, so let's see if we can do it. From what I've seen you may even be seeing these bad boys in version 3, which I know a lot of you guys have always wanted. Again, I want to apologise for not posting in over 7 months. I won't immediately return to regular YouTube posting as I need a little bit more time for myself to be ready, but I still wanted to get this video out as soon as possible. And in final news, I have finally plucked up the courage to make a TikTok account. It's not a replacement for YouTube in any way, it's just experimental so I may even choose to get rid of it, but if you're interested I recommend you check out my handle, at Blue Commands, link in description. After working on a big project for some time, I've got lots of small fast paced projects I want to give a try, and TikTok is just the perfect place for that. It'll also give me a good indicator based on TikTok popularity on what's worth my time turning into a full blown YouTube video. I'll post the small creations I make which you don't usually get to see, and mini tutorials of cool and easy commands you can do to mess with your friends or survive a world. I've also got some pretty fun stories from when I did paid commissions for big YouTubers and my own videos for over the past 5 years, such as why I have an adventure map called James Charles, which many of you kindly pointed out in my last video, which I do think is a pretty funny story actually. So if any of that sounded interesting to you, please give it a follow, it would mean a lot. Thank you so much to my lovely patron supporters on screen right now. Not all of you are still patrons, but as I haven't posted this year, the least I could do to thank you all is still keep you in the credits of this video, as I appreciate you all so much. Feel free to give this video a like if you enjoyed it, but anyways, thank you all so much for being so patient with me. I love you all and I hope you will enjoy playing with the remake version too. See you all next time, bye!